Equilibrium is the chemical concept of balance between products and reactants. In the Le Chatelier's principle video, it was seen how outside forces and side reactions can impact exactly what the concentration is of product and reactant. By inducing stress on the reaction, the equilibrium could shift to either generate more product or more reactant. Exactly how much product or reactant is determined by the equilibrium constant, which is based on the relative concentrations between the products and reactants. This reaction looks at the equilibrium between two complex ions, the cobalt tetrachloride complex, as well as the cobalt hexa-aqua complex. These two compounds have very distinct and separate colors, which can indicate whether one is present or not. This experiment looks at how different factors can affect the equilibrium, and you can therefore measure the exact amount of one or the other. The cobalt chloride hexahydrate solid appears as a red powder. When this red powder is dissolved in water, the resulting solution is a pink or red solution of the cobalt hexahydrate complex. With a large excess of water, the chemical equilibrium shifts to, to ensure that all of the cobalt is bound to the water in the red complex. If, however, the cobalt chloride is dissolved in an anhydrous solution, one that does not contain water, how will this affect the overall appearance and therefore the overall equilibrium of the reaction? The sample mass that was given in your unknown sample is first weighed out. After, this powder is dissolved in anhydrous ethanol, which contains no water. The red cobalt chloride hexahydrate is dissolved in pure ethanol resulting in a dark blue solution. This exact color is referencing the color known as cobalt blue. This blue color is the cobalt tetrachloride complex. When comparing with the cobalt hexa-aqua complex, which is red, it can be seen how important solvent selection is when performing a reaction. There is still water present in the blue solution, however. The powder that was weighed is cobalt chloride hexahydrate. There are water molecules contained in the solid powder. Therefore, this solution is existing in equilibrium. When more water is added, the equilibrium will shift to the red cobalt hexa-aqua complex. By knowing exactly the concentrations of all four components of the reaction, the cobalt tetrachloride, the cobalt hexa-aqua, water, and free chloride ions, you can calculate the equilibrium constant of this reaction and determine at what points there are more products or more reactant. To look at this, a known amount of water will be added to the blue solution. This will shift the reaction to make more of the red complex.
With each addition, there are 200 microliters of water being added. Notice how the bottom, where the water settles, is becoming a red color. When the solution is blended, however, it goes back to the blue solution. The solution now appears a purple color, a blend of the blue solution as well as the red solution. At these concentrations, there is an equilibrium reaction between the two, and it is noticeably apparent by the change in color. Overall, 800 microliters of distilled water was added to the ethanol mixture. In order to determine the moles of water added and thereby get a concentration, the mass of water added needs to be determined. The mass of water can be found using the volume of water added, which was 800 microliters, and the density of water at the given temperature which is room temperature at the moment of the reaction. Not only can solvent play an important role in an equilibrium reaction, but the temperature of the reaction can play a role as well. In this experiment, we will look at the concentrations of both the cobalt tetrachloride complex, which is blue, and the cobalt hexa-aqua complex, which is red. Using a spectrophotometer that was simulated in the first experiment, we can compare to known samples and get accurate concentrations of these pure substances at each temperature. You can use your unknown value to look up what is the concentration of each of these two components at three different temperatures, room temperature, ice temperature, and an elevated temperature. At room temperature, which was given earlier, the solution mixture appears a purple color, a blend between the blue cobalt tetrachloride complex and the red cobalt hexa-aqua complex. At this temperature, they are in equilibrium to generate this color. The solution can be placed in a warm water bath at the temperature seen, seen here. When the purple solution is placed in the warm water bath, you can see a shift in the equilibrium. The color of the solution shifts to generate more of the blue color. This would indicate the formation of more of the cobalt tetrachloride complex. At this temperature, the absorbance of each compound can be determined again based on a spectrophotometer. The concentrations of both the cobalt chloride complex and the cobalt water complex are given in your unknown. 
from these, you can determine the equilibrium constant at the warm temperature. Likewise, the solution can be placed in an ice water bath at the temperature seen here. When the solution is placed in the ice water bath, you can begin to see the color change at the bottom of the vial. As the temperature further decreases of the solution, the color shifts to more of a red color, indicating the formation of more of the cobalt water complex. As with both the room temperature sample and the elevated temperature sample, this solution can have the concentration of both complexes determined by, spec by a spectrophotometer. Based on your unknown number, you can determine, using these concentrations, the equilibrium constant at the three temperatures listed. Using the calculated equilibrium constants at these three temperatures, you can plot what's referred to as a Van't Hoff plot. This graph relates equilibrium and the equilibrium constant to the temperature and the thermodynamic properties of the equilibrium reaction. You can therefore determine at what temperature does this reaction become spontaneous?